Hello everyone, my name is Shubhi and today I'm going to show you how to set up a packet capture for site-to-site -site VPN gateways using the portal experience. So packet capture is a common technique used to analyze the packets going through a network to help troubleshoot connectivity and performance related issues, which otherwise can be very complex to debug. It can help determine if it's the customer side of the network, Azure side of the network, or something in between that is causing an error. Providing a packet capture natively for site-to-site -site gateways enables our customers to triage and troubleshoot their issues on their own before reaching out to the support team. Certain scenarios where this can be useful is when the tunnel between on-premises sites and Azure is broken. It can help find where the tunnel is causing problems. Or troubleshooting when there are changes to a firewall configuration or a new firewall has come up that could be causing the packets to drop. This is also useful in debugging if the traffic between on-premises and Azure has high latency. Currently in Virtual WAN, we offer point-to-site connectivity, site-to-site -site connectivity, and express route connectivity. We don't offer packet capture for point-to-site and express route currently. In a virtual hub, a VPN gateway has multiple VPN connections, and this packet capture captures all the traffic on a particular VPN gateway across all VPN connections. But in the future, we plan to add a connection level packet capture capability as well. Since there can be a lot of traffic on the gateway level, there can be a slight performance hit. Within the feature, we can start, stop, or abort the packet capture. The user can choose the start option to begin the capture, and once it has run for the required amount of time, the packet capture can be stopped by providing a SAS URL of the storage container to store the PCAP files which are generated. These files can be viewed later in a tool called like Wireshark. If for some reason the packet capture needs to be aborted or canceled midway, the customer can use the abort button which will ensure that the PCAP files are not generated nor stored. There are several filler filters available that can help narrow down the packet capture for easier debugging. Some of them include tracing flags and TCP flags, which can help determine the types of packet capture, or source subnets and destination subnets, which can help filter the packets from and to specific subnet ranges. More in-depth information about these can be found in the official documentation, which will be linked below. So now let's go ahead and take a look at a demo of how to use the packet capture. So here I am in the Azure portal and I've signed in using my account. So the first thing we need to do is navigate to our virtual van. Now I can see that the Azure service virtual van is visible on my homepage, but if it's not, you can search for virtual van right here. Once you go in, choose the virtual van that you want to use. And inside the virtual van, choose the hub, which has a VPN site enabled. Here, we will see that we're going to use the Korea Central hub. This is because we want to run the packet capture for site-to-site -site VPN gateways. Once in here, we'll head over to VPN site-to-site -site under the connectivity section, and we'll see the packet capture option right here. Once we click on this, we land on this page, which tells us that running this packet capture captures all the packets on the site-to-site -site VPN gateway that will match the filter criteria that we will specify next, and it will include packets for all connected branches. So here we can just go ahead and click on Start, which brings us to this page where you can choose the filters that is required. For now, we'll just go ahead with the default values. So confirm that we want to start the packet capture. This may take a few seconds, but once the packet capture starts, we should see a notification saying that it started successfully, as well as a banner that indicates that it's in progress, like right here. So now the next thing we might want to do is either stop or abort this packet capture. Let's see what happens if we try to stop it. So once you've run the packet capture for required amount of time and you click on stop, you're prompted to enter a SAS URL. This is the SAS URL for the storage container where your PCAP files, that is the packet capture files which are generated, will be stored. 
So to get your SAS URL for your container, just navigate to the portal again in a different tab and go to storage accounts. Under the storage account, choose the storage account that you want to use. So here I'm going to use test account packet capture. And then within the storage account, just navigate to containers under data storage where you can choose the appropriate container. Here I'll go ahead with this one. Once inside the container, go to share access tokens under the settings. And once here, make sure that you enable read and write access both. And then just click on generate SAS URL. Copy this SAS URL from here and paste it in this box right here. And then you can confirm that you want to stop this packet capture. Now stopping the packet capture might take a minute or so, which is completely fine. We'll just go ahead and skip to when the packet capture stops successfully. So right here we can see that we get the notification that the packet capture has stopped successfully on this VPN gateway and the packet capture screen is back to normal where we can restart the process if we want. Now let's go back to our storage container tab and going to the overview section right here. Let's take a look at the files that were generated and stored for this packet capture. The folder names right here are based on the date and the timestamp for when the files are generated and stored. So navigating to the appropriate date and then choosing the timestamp. We can see that there are two files that were generated and stored. Now this is because each VPN gateway has two instances running on it and the packet capture runs on both of them. So let's just look at one of this right here. Here we can navigate to the PCAP file and download it. If you have a tool like Wireshark, you can open this file in it and see the contents right here. Depending on how long you run your packet capture for, the length of the file may vary. So similarly for the other instance as well. Coming back to our packet capture again, let's see how we can start and abort the process. So starting the process looks exactly the same where you can choose the filters and once you're good with them, I'll go ahead with the default ones and start the process. Once the process is started, we will try and abort this packet capture. Now, once we click on abort right here, we'll see that there's no SAS URL that's required. Now this is because the PCAP files will not be generated or stored as part of the abort operation. So once you show that we want to abort this process, we just go ahead and confirm this. And again, abort might take a minute or so, and uh, we'll just directly skip to the part where the abort has finished successfully. So right here we can see that the packet capture is aborted successfully. And in this case, no new files will be generated or stored. So you can cross check right here. There's no new file that was added. So with this, we have successfully demoed how to start, stop or abort a packet capture. And that wraps up the demo. Thank you for watching.